Americans snooze through their president's impeachment. Hi, everyone. I'm Jeff. Jr. is the producer, and this is episode 233 of Plain English on Thursday, February 13th, 2020. On today's episode, the third ever impeachment of an American president didn't appear to change much in American politics. Most people either went about their business or had their existing opinions about the president reinforced. The expression today is a phrasal verb: take over. And Jr. has a song of the week. The video lesson for Plus subscribers is all about how to use "or else" to describe an alternative or a consequence. How to describe an alternative or a consequence using "or else." All that and more is available on the episode webpage at plainenglish dot com slash two three three. It was only the third time in history that an American president has been impeached, so you might think that Americans would have been. Wrapped with attention at the drama that played out in Washington, you might be wrong. Donald Trump's impeachment trial has had one of two effects on most Americans: either it has bored them, or it has pushed them further into their corners. Impeachment is a process. Written into the American Constitution, that allows our legislature to remove a president from office for, and these are the words, treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. Our legislature has two chambers: the lower house, the House of Representatives. And the upper house, the Senate, each chamber has a unique role. The House of Representatives can impeach a president with a majority vote, and this only means that charges are brought to the Senate for a trial. The Senate conducts the trial. Allowing the House of Representatives to press its case as prosecutors, and the president to offer a private defense. After the trial, the senators vote. If two thirds vote against the sitting president, then he is removed from office, and the vice president takes over. That last part has never happened. The first impeachment trial in our history was in 1868. Then President Andrew Johnson was saved by just a single vote in the Senate. The second was in 1998 and 1999, when a majority of senators. But not the required supermajority voted to remove President Bill Clinton from office on two counts. President Clinton served the rest of his term, and this time too, Donald Trump survived. The impeachment articles were unsurprisingly rejected, and Trump will serve the rest of his term. And will be on the ballot for re-election in November. What were the charges brought against Donald Trump? There were two formal articles of impeachment. 
or two formal charges. The first said that the president abused his power in office by trying to get a foreign power, in this case Ukraine, to interfere in the upcoming 2020 presidential election. Specifically, the charge was that Trump asked the president of Ukraine to announce a corruption investigation into Hunter Biden, the son of Joe Biden, the former vice president and a potential political opponent in 2020. While his father was vice president, Hunter Biden accepted a position on the board of directors for a Ukraine energy company, a position that came with a big check and not too much work. According to the charge, Trump told Ukraine that it must announce a corruption investigation into Hunter Biden or else he would withhold American military aid. In this way, he abused his power and used the foreign policy of the United States for his own political aims, according to the charge. The second charge stated that he withheld access to members of his staff from Congress when Congress was investigating the first charge. Americans broadly had one of two reactions to the trial. The first was simple boredom. The president's party controls the Senate, and no senators from his party had ever stated that they would even consider voting to remove him from office. Meanwhile, no Democrat had ever stated that they would consider not voting to remove Trump from office. That made the whole thing anticlimactic and, some thought, pointless. Perhaps one or two senators might surprise the world with their votes, but the outcome was never in doubt. Although the proceedings were called a trial— They were more political than they were legal. We are already in a presidential election year, and I don't think many people were in the mood for even more political theater than what was already on the calendar. The managers from the House of Representatives presented a rambling case which amounted to a laundry list of their complaints about Trump, both related and unrelated to the charges. The people will have their own say about Trump in 10 months anyway, so many people didn't see much reason to get excited about the impeachment so close to the next election. Not everyone was bored, of course. Among the people who were interested, though, most had their existing opinions about Trump reinforced. Many people saw the Ukraine episode as yet another example of an out-of-control president who makes his own rules, squashes his opponents, and uses the power of the government to tip the scales in his favor. Those who support the president saw this as a continued effort by the Democrats and sympathetic government employees to use investigations and anonymous leaks to prevent Trump from achieving anything in office. Few minds were truly changed during the trial. Opinion polling on impeachment closely mirrored Trump's overall approval rating 
suggesting that, politically speaking, the trial ended almost exactly where it started. If you've been listening for a while, then I'd like to get your opinion. Jr. and I posted a listener survey, which you can find at plainenglish.com/survey. S U R V E Y. It just asks a few questions about your experience learning English and about what you think of plain English. We'd love to hear from you. It's a great way to help us out and practice your English writing at the same time. And remember, no need to be shy if you're not used to writing in English. The most important thing is to make your voice heard. So check that out at plainenglish.com/survey. I have a phrasal verb for you today, and that is take over. When someone takes over, that person takes control. In the first part of this episode, I explained the rules of impeachment in the United States. If a president is removed from office, the vice president. Takes over. That means the vice president takes control, takes control of the powers of the presidency, and in this case, actually becomes president. When else would a vice president take over for a president? Well, if a president dies, the vice president takes. Over, that has happened several times here in the United States. Most recently in 1963, a quirk of American history. In 1841, President William Henry Harrison died in office. He had been president for 32 days. It was the first time in our history. That a vice president took over as a result of the death of a president, and it happened a month into the ninth president's term. Jay Leno was the host of a popular comedy show in the United States called The Tonight Show. It came on at about eleven thirty at night on the East Coast. He left the show in 2009, and Conan O'Brien took over. Jay Leno returned for four more years before finally retiring from the show for a second time in 2014. At that point, comedian Jimmy Fallon took over duties as host of the Tonight Show. That's a general use of take over when you specify who comes next. First, the president, then the vice president. First, Jay Leno, then Jimmy Fallon. Now, I want to give you two other ways to use take over. Two more specific ways to use it. Here's the first way. There are times when the first person voluntarily or temporarily gives control of his position to the second person. In this case, we say "take over for." So we say that the second person takes over for the first, almost like a favor. This too has happened with American presidents. Ronald Reagan had surgery and was under anesthesia for about eight hours. During that time, his vice president 
George H. W. Bush, took over for him as acting president. It was voluntary and, in this case, temporary. If you're on a long drive, it can be tiring to be the person driving the whole time. After about four or five hours, you might want someone to take over for you. That means you would like someone else to be the driver to take over for you. As a passenger, it's courteous to offer to take over after a few hours in the car. In episode 70, we talked about how machines are taking over in the kitchen. That episode talked about restaurants where meals are prepared entirely by robots. I warned you to get ready for the day when machines take over for people in the kitchen. Now, here's another little twist you can put on take over, and that is to say take over from. Remember, we use take over for when the first person voluntarily gives over his or her position or job. When you say take over from, it sometimes implies the opposite. You know the fashion retailer H&M. A new CEO took over from a member of the founding family. The former CEO was a member of the family that started the business. And that person struggled in the face of competition from online retailers. So when I read that a new CEO took over from one of the founding family members, I suspected that maybe this wasn't entirely voluntary. Maybe there was a little conflict here. The new CEO took over from one of the members of the family that started the business. These are shades of gray with these words. It's not always clear that takeover for is voluntary and takeover from is not voluntary. You might say that Conan O'Brien took over for Jay Leno, but those two comedians didn't always get along. Likewise, I said uh, or I saw news that Netflix announced which actress will take over from Olivia Coleman as the queen in the series The Crown. The article said that the actress Imelda Staunton will take over from Olivia Coleman as the queen in season five of the show. Now, clearly, in this case, there's no rivalry. The character is getting much older, so they need a new actress. Imelda Staunton will take over from Olivia Coleman. That's just natural. So the lesson here is that the choice of either take over for or take over from doesn't always tell you the circumstances, but it might give you a hint. Today's song is When the Party's Over by Billie Eilish. She became the second artist and the first female ever to sweep the biggest four awards at the Grammys. Those would be Best Album, Best Record, Best Song of the Year, and Best New Artist. When she was a kid, her mom told her that she could stay up 
as late as she wanted as long as she was making music. So JR's favorite song by the 18-year-old Billie Eilish is When the Party's Over. That's all for today. Thanks again, as always, for being with us. And thanks to Guillermo for suggesting today's topic. Remember, we'll be back with another episode on Monday. Remember to take our listener survey, too, at plainenglish.com slash survey. It's not too long, just a few questions about your experience listening in English and what you think about the topics we cover. It will help JR and me as we continue to make improvements to the website, the program format, topics, things like that. And as a special thank you, we'll give you access to a video lesson from me just as soon as you press submit on the survey. To participate, head to plainenglish.com slash survey, S-U-R-V-E-Y. See you Monday.